afternoon, fans. This is your girl from Mel's Mad Chat, and this is episode 264 of the podcast. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to start um, doing uploads because I only get 20 minutes of streaming on my internet, and it's getting ridiculous. I don't understand why. I don't. I really don't. So... Um, from this point forward, I'm going to have to do these uploads. So they will be at two o'clock. They will be posted at two o'clock from now on. I'm just going to have to, you know, upload them and it sucks, but I have no choice, you know? So, um, it is what it is, but, um, we're going to keep on rolling. We're going to keep on doing, unfortunately I can't interact with you, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a good thing. I'm going to go do like a Twitter live or Twitter space, maybe on when it's being uh, on a Saturday when I either get home from my son or I, you know, I, at a, like at two o'clock, you can interact with me on that. Uh, but I can't upload and I mean, I can't um, live stream. So I'm hoping that you guys will understand. I really loved doing the live stream, but with my internet not um being reliable i i can upload all i want with no problem it's just that i can't go live and it's annoying i can i can watch videos i can you know send emails whatever the case may be but my internet doesn't want to deal with the fucking um up um the live stream so whatever the case may be so um let's get to this and get you in get you out on a uh, friday afternoon um this episode of Mel's Mad Chat 264 is dedicated to the people over at Harry's, harrys.com. What are you waiting for? Go check out Harry's. Get all your shaving and beard uh, toiletry essentials right there. It's a one-stop shop, and it gets del delivered right to your mailboxes. So what's good like that? Also, please go check out Maestro Classics at maestroclassics.com and get all your beard essentials. Get merchandise, everything to boot. They have really great products. They also have great merchandise, quality t-shirts, seriously. Also, do me a favor and go check out Liquid Death at liquiddeath.com and go visit their um, website for, for your murdering your thirst, which they have three flavors, which is lime, mixed berry, and mango orange. Also, please go check out Death Witch Coffee at deathwitchcoffee.com and check out their seasonal flavor, which is gingerbread. I'm on the hook about um, drinking, uh, get, getting it because I don't, I don't want to get it and I don't like it and I'm going to be stuck with nine pods. So go check them out. Um, if anybody has, um, what is it called, um, drank it, please let me know and go into my, uh, go follow me on the Twitter thing and tell me what, what's it like, or go reach out to me some way or another, even in, in the comments, in the video and everything. So, um, go check them out at, de uh, deathwishcoffee.com. If you have nothing to do tonight, if you're not going out and the weather's going to be shitty, why don't you go to fight, uh, fight TV plus pay the $5 and you can get all access to HOG wrestling's pay-per-view that have been aired on fight TV. But also, you could go check them out and get the download on Kenta coming to House of Glory. And he's going to be performing sometime in December. And you could go get your tickets right then and there. So that you just go to HOGWrestling.net. Now, if you're in the greater Pennsylvania area, please go check out two independent companies, which are Outbreak Wrestling and Sanctuary. Please go follow them on all major social media. Speaking of social media, go check me out on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, Mel's Mad Chat. And please check me out on Snapchat and Facebook. Please also, when you're on here looking at the videos and everything like that, please go check out all the content, like, share, and and please so turn uh, hit that subscribe button, turn on all my notifications so when I do upload or I'm able to go live, you know about it and then in that. So let's get this started. We have, uh, we have the raw opening. We have the raw packet, the, the, the opening package. 
we go right to the commentators that welcome the audience and they uh, walk through the card. The Usos theme song plays and they come out along with Solo Sequoia. Crowd starts chanting for Sami Zayn. Jay starts saying the bloodline is now in their city. Jimmy continues that Roman smashed Logan Paul while they smashed the brawling brutes at Crown Jewel. Jay says that is the pass. They, he then addressed their match with the New Day on SmackDown, which is tonight. He then says he will be the longest reigning tag team champions after Friday. He was interrupted by the New Day. Kofi says they're getting ahead of themselves. He then congratulates the Usos. Xavier says they will become tag team champions on Friday. He also says that the 483-day reign as champions will stay intact. Jimmy says that he gave them their props. The New Day are breaking down barriers. He says he's proud of them. He calls them the second best tag team in the WWE. Xavier says that since they still hold the record, the Usos are chasing them. He then says that the Uso had family had a family to coddle them, and they built their legacy on the backs of their family. The New Day built their legacies on their own backs. Jimmy then asks if they know what it's like to have their family pressure. Xavier says pressure is not having a job security and building a YouTube just for recognition. He then says that the pressure turned them into diamonds. Jimmy then asks if he's talking about the diamonds that were in his crown that Jay stomped to the crowd. They then took credit for Kofi Mania. He then asked Kofi not to show up on Friday. Kofi then says what kind of father would he be if he forfeited his title to them? He then says the this title represents a time they would come to work to obtain some success as a team. He also says it represents the last time the New Day was whole. He was interrupted by Matt Riddle, whose who's music played. This is where it got a little funny, which... We all know Matt Riddle play, he smokes pot, all right? We all know it. It's not a fucking secret in the WWE and in the uh, pro wrestling world. But can we please move on from this juvenile shit, please? It's not, it shouldn't be every fucking week. Unless um, Matt Riddle wants it, then that's a whole other different ball game. He starts saying he didn't mean interrupt, but he came out there because he saw the New Day. The Usos asked him to shut up. Riddle says he likes to hit the bong because he has bongos. Play on words. When he gets tense, he asks the New Day to hit the bong, and they do. He then asks the bloodline, and Jimmy plays the bongo. He then asks if Jay wants to hit the bong, but he slaps the, slaps the bong away. Riddle then challenges them to a six-man tag team match. So we get into that match. We come back from the commercial break. The match begins with Jimmy knocks down Jay and attacks him in the corner. Riddle kicks the chest of Jimmy and hits a gut wrench suplex before tagging in Xavier, who stops Jimmy in the corner. He then tags Kofi, who continues stomping before tagging in Riddle, who does the same, and they exchange tags until Kofi is the legal person. Jimmy shoves Kofi in the corner and tags Jimmy Uso, who gets knocked down by Kofi. He tags in Woods. Woods works the left arm of Jimmy Uso. I mean, Jay Uso. He tags in Riddle, who kicks Jay. Jay with an insecurity on Riddle. They, Jay goes for a punch, but is sent to the outside by Riddle, who attempts a floating bro, but is knocked down by Solo Sequoia. We come back from the commercial break. The Uso slam Riddle to the mat, cover one, two, kick out. Jimmy hits the hip attack on Riddle in the corner, cover one, two, kick out. He tags in Solo, who kicks Riddle's chest. Solo continues to work Riddle. He hits the leg drop on Riddle. 
Solo tags in Jay to super kick R Riddle's body. He attacks him in the corner. Riddle tries to fight back and hits a, the suplex on Jay. Jay tags in Solo, who hits him with a knee and tags in Woods. The New Day unleashes fury of attacks on Sequoia. Cover, once you kick out. He tags in Kofi and who hits crossbody and follows it with a kick and the boom. He super kicks Jay, goes for trouble in paradise, but is caught by Sequoia, who hits a belly to belly suplex. He sends Kofi to the outside and slams his head to the announcer's desk. We go to commercial break. Solo, we come back and Solo hits a leg drop on Kofi. Once you kick out, he tags in Jimmy, who quickly tags in Jay, who goes for a leg drop from the top rope. Cover, once you kick out. Jay tags in Solo, who continues to attack Kingston. Kofi fights back and hits a Tornado DDT. Both members tag their respective partners. Riddle attacks the Usos and Solo. He hits an Exploder Suplex on the Usos, followed by a Broton and a PK to Jay. He then hits a Powerbomb, followed by a Knee Strike to Jay. Riddle climbs up to the top rope and goes for a Moonsault, but Jay moves out of the way and hits a Super Kick and goes for a Splash and is caught by Caught by Jimmy tags himself in before the splash and hits the split and hits the splash. Covers is broken up by Woods. Solo sends Woods to the outside and uh, and across the announcer's desk. He then sends Kofi into the steel steps. Riddle hits floating bro, but is taken out by Jimmy Uso. When Jimmy tries to get back into the ring, Riddle hits the DDT followed by an RK or RKO. Solo comes in from behind, hits a spinning solo for the win. The winners are Solo Sequoia and the Usos. They show the highlights of Crown Jewel. JBL's music plays and walks out to the ring. That is your cue of, to get up and do something fucking else. So we come back from the commercial breaks. JBL starts saying that he has sold out every great arena on the earth, but this one of this isn't one of them. He then asks the crowd to stand up and put their hands together to welcome the modern day wrestling God known as Baron Corbin. So we have Cedric Alexander versus Baron Corbin. You're going to see, cause I think Bobby Lashley is going to get his way because of the whole situation with Brock Lesnar that they're going to help him get their, his wing, win back from Crown Jewel. Um, you're going to see more of the Hurt Business get back onto TV. Corbin's music plays and comes out to the ring. Cedric Alexander's music comes out, plays, and comes he comes out to the ring. Baron Corbin starts attacking Cedric Alexander in the corner. He continues to attack Cedric. He hits a clothesline, cover one, two, kick out. Cedric with a basement drop kick followed by the neutralizer. He hits a suicide dive on Corbin. He enters the ring. Corbin hits the end of days for the win. That was it. Link, it was over. We go to Seth Rollins in the backstage as he's walking to the ring. And he's getting himself ready for the United States Championship Open Challenge. So he comes out to the ring. He gets on the mic and he's welcomed by everyone to he's welcomed everybody to Monday Night Rollins. He continues to say he has come. He has some business to attend to tonight. It, tonight's a special night because he is bringing back the United States Championship Open Challenge. The Judgment Day music plays. The group walks to the ring. The, they corner the, the ring as Finn enters the ring. Balor says he's got a bone to pick with Seth. He says that a couple of years ago, Seth cost him gold. So he's going to cost Seth gold tonight. He's interrupted by the OC who is walking to the ring. Rollins slowly back away. AJ Styles says that this isn't over between the two factions. Balor says that the only thing that is over is the Judgment Day. Styles says that it's always been the three of us versus the four of you. He says he was looking for someone to even the odds, but that someone found them. Mia Yim appears from 
behind and attacks Rhea Ripley, and the two factions start brawling in the ring. Mia attacks Ripley with a kendo stick and sends her over the barricade. AJ Styles hits a Styles Clash on Dominic as the Judgment Day retreats while the OC standing tall in the ring. After that, the match, the match, Seth was interviewed by Kathy Kelly. After that segment, sorry, was interviewed by Kathy Kelly, who says they're going to have an open challenge tonight either way. My hair, I hate my hair right now. Sorry. Otis versus Elias. This was qu quick and painless. Otis starts by shoving Elias in the corner. Elias file fights back and he looks for a slam, but Otis shrugs him off. Otis hits a crossbody on Elias. Elias fights back with a jumping knee, knocking him down. He goes for another knee to Gable, but Otis catches him and hits a world's strongest slam for the win. Otis picks up the win. We go to the back. The Judgment Day are interview backstage. They say that the OC have solved nothing, and the result will always be the same. Dominic says Mia doesn't stand a chance. Rhea says they can bring the whole damn army, and it still won't be enough. As they leave, she runs into Bianca Belair and gives her a pointed greeting, like, see that thing that's on your shoulder? Shine it up real nice, because it's coming to me, bitch. Oh, yes, this has got to happen. After fucking goddamn Rhea Ripley has been through the ringer, she needs to get rewarded with that title. That's the only... And if fucking Charlotte comes back, I swear to God, she gets involved... Guaranteed she's going to get involved in fucking the title picture immediately like she like never left. She is not needed in WWE. We are doing just fine without her. Guaranteed she's going to come back and she's going to be put placed right in the fucking war games. Because God forbid she misses a, a historic match. And yes, I got the new Rhea Ripley shirt. So sue me. Bianca Belair's music plays and she walks out with Alexa and um, Asuka. Bianca Belair says she's proud of to be the Raw Women's Champion and claims that this is far from over. She, call, then, she then calls out Damage Control. Damage Control music plays and Dakota Kai says there's no one cares that she was the last woman standing because she hasn't beaten Bailey at while Bailey has beaten her twice, beating Pin. Damage Control brags about beating Alexa Bliss and Asuka, but Alexa says that that only reason that Damage Control has the titles because is because of Nikki Cross. Asuka and Io start arguing in Japanese, which I found very highly entertaining. Better than what fucking Baron Corbin doing in um with JBL. Both teams start brawling in the ring, and Damage Control is sent to the outside. Bianca says this is war, and it will end in war games. Nikki attacks Bianca from behind, and they start brawling. Bailey hits the rose plant on Bianca. Asuka tries to attack her, but Nikki attacks her as well. Cross then attacks Alexa in the corner before hitting the neckbreaker on Bliss. Bailey tells Bianca that she will see her at War Games. We come back from commercial and we go right into Shelton Benjamin, another Hurt Business member. Austin Theory's music plays. He walks out with the Money in the Bank briefcase. Sheldon, Sheldon Benjamin theme song plays. Next, he comes out to the ring. Theory taken down by Benjamin. Benjamin sent into the second turnbuckle. Theory follows it with a dropkick and continues to attack Benjamin. Benjamin fights back not enough. He gets knocked down by Theory. Theory picks up, picks him up, but Shelton slips out and hits a German suplex. Cover one, two, kick out. Theory climbs on top ropes, is stepped by, stepped by J Benjamin. However, Theory rakes the eyes of Benjamin and hits A-Town for the win. Winner, Austin Theory. The Miz is shown walking to the ring with his match against Johnny Gargano. Come back from commercial break. Johnny Gargano versus The Miz. The match music... The, the Miz's music plays first. He walks out of the ring. 
He gets on the mic and says that he wants to be honest with everyone. He also dismisses Gargano's allegation and calls it one of the biggest deep fake ever. He also says he he says that he has to defend himself against any every, everyone. He further stated that his father even believes Johnny. He also says that he met with a Hollywood producer who wants to tell his story. He also says that he, he has spoken to his lawyers about moving forward with a defamation case. Gargano's music plays and he comes out saying that the Miz's dad is a smart man. He says that he can't even start a match without blowing the whistle on himself about something he did. He continued, he continued that when he did the interview, he was hoping that the Miz would admit what he did and pay Loomis. He then says he needed further evidence and he hired someone to get it. He then revealed that the Hollywood producer Miz was talking about was in fact a private investigator who had a hidden camera. He plays the footage. During the interview, the Miz asked if the network would be interested in the story. He then asked to speak off the record, revealed that everything Johnny said is true and that he orchestrated the entire thing. He further says that his phone has been ringing off the hook, ringing off, been going off in, until he has stopped paying Dexter Loomis. Things got out of control. Ms. Future, Mrs. Future, Future says that Loomis should have gotten paid because the plan was scrapped. Gargano then proceeds towards the ring. Gargano starts by attacking the Miz in the corner, followed by followed it up with a drop kick, sending him to the outside. He goes to the apron and kicks Miz and follows it with a senton. Gargano chops the Miz and sends him into the ring. He goes for a roll-up, one-two kick out. He works the Miz. Johnny, Johnny continues to work Miz's arm. Miz fights back with a kick to Gargano's face. He kicks Johnny in the midsection and takes his rakes his notes. Gargano fights back, fights back, but Miz knocks him down with a knee and goes back to work Gargano. Miz with a clothesline in the corner. He climbs to the top and dives off, but is caught in a atomic drop by Gargano, who rolls over and kicks him, followed by a neck breaker. Cover once you kick out. The Miz is sent to the outside. He climbed on the apron. Gargano hits the super kick. He then dives on the Miz. Miz picks up Gargano and places him on the barricade on the barricade before super kicking him. We come back from commercial break. Miz attacks Gargano in the corner, misses as Johnny hits the backstabber. Gargano with left punches and a crossbody. He hits a double knees in the corner. And follows with a face buster. Cover once you kick out. Gargano said to the apron as the Miz looks to attack Gargano. He hits a spear through the ropes. Cover once you kick out. Miz hits the DDT. Cover once you kick out. Miz does the it kicks on Johnny. He goes for the final kick, but Gargano ducks and both men exchange kicks. Miz goes for the skull crushing finale, but is rolled up once you kick out. Gargano hits the super kick. Cover once you kick out. Gargano hits the suicide dive. Miz sends Johnny into the announcer's desk before sending him into the ring. The Miz dragged, is dragged underneath the ring and comes out with a turnbuckle strap. He asks the referee to look underneath the ring. As the referee is distracted, the Miz hits Gargano with the turnbuckle strap for the win. The winner is Miz. After the match, Loomis attacks Miz from behind with a steel chair and runs away as security chases him. Backstage, Damage Control hit, says Nikki is just like them. She was lost and forgotten, but they haven't forgotten about her, and she can unleash her aggression at War Games. Bailey says she doesn't have to wait for, her, for War Games. She can unleash it tonight. Nikki laughs and says it's time to play. We go to commercial break. We have the 24-7 championship match. Nikki Cross versus Dana Brooke for the last fucking time. I am incredibly happy that Triple H finally have done something that we've all wanted for so, so long. 
So um, they go to the ring. The match begins with Vicious attacks Brooke, vi viciously attacking Brooks. She continues to attack her in the corner. She works Dana Brooke. Brooke fights back by attacking Cross in the corner. Nikki pulls her down by the hair, continues to vicious assault. Cross hits the neckbreaker for the win. Nikki Cross is the new 24 7 champion. After the match, Bailey presents the 24 7 title to Nikki Cross. We come back from commercial break. Damage Control are walking backstage with Nikki Cross, who throws down the 24 7 championship. It was supposed to go in the garbage, but it landed on the floor, which it's in the realm of a trash can. I'm happy. The OC are interviewed backstage. AJ says it's good to get the upper hand on judgment on the judgment day. Mia says it's just a sample of what you can do. Gallows welcomes her to the OC. Seth Rollins' music plays and walks out to the ring. He gets on the mic and says they were about to have a U.S. championship match before rudely interrupted. He reminds everyone that this month marks 10 years of Seth Rollins in WWE. The crowd chants, thank you, Seth. He says the crowd has been with him through it all. He says that the U.S. title means a lot since it was far too long since he held gold in WWE. He also says that he made it he made it the title on Raw in just a few weeks. He asks the crowd if it, the crowd is ready for an open challenge, and he calls anyone who wants a piece of him. Ali appears on the Titan Tron. He says that he will be the one. Before he could complete his statement, he was attacked by Lashley, who says that doesn't have to that doesn't have to be have his title because Lesnar and Rollins because of what that he has the title because of uh, Lesnar. He tries to attack Lashley, but is taken out. Lashley accepts Rollins' challenge, and we go into the match, which is the main event, which this is going to get fucked up all times, too, all right? And it doesn't make sense, but it's a way to get out of it. It's a convoluted way, but it's a way to get out of it. So it's over and done with. We can move on, you know? Bobby Lashley music hits, and he's making his way to the ring. Bobby immediately attacks Rollins, sending him in, out of the ring and into the barricade. Lashley viciously attacks Rollins. He sends Rollins into the ring, but Rollins rolls out immediately. Lashley goes for a spear, but is caught with a super kick. Rollins sends Lashley into the steel steps. He attempts the pedigree, but Lashley counters it, and it continues to attack Rollins as WWE officials come out to stop him. He drops Rollins to the concrete before continuing the assault. He then picks up Rollins and slams him into the ring post. Lashley picks up Rollins and slams him through the announce table as more WWE officials come, officials and security come out to stop Lashley. He walks away up, he walks away up the entrance ramp as Theory comes out with the Money in the Bank briefcase. So Austin Theory cashes in on the U.S. Championship. Okay. Then we get the Money in the Bank off the off Austin Theory. Then we can actually book the next Money in the Bank briefcase logically. Beautiful. It just makes uh, um, Theory an asshole. He looks like a dickhead. But that's neither here nor there. We come back from commercial. Theory says he wants to cash in the Money in the Bank and throws Rollins back in the ring. He hit he hits his left hand on Rollins. Cover one two kick out. He hits a neck breaker. Cover one two kick out. He picks up Rollins and goes for an eight town downtown. But Rollins counters and tries to hit hit, hit a pedigree. Theory escapes and hits pedigree. Cover one two kick out. He picks up Rollins, but it, he escapes and sends Theory to the outside. Rollins with the power bomb followed by a super kick and a forearm to the back of Theory's head. Rollins goes for the stop, but Theory hits an eight town downtown. As the referee counts to three, Lashley pulls the referee out of the ring. Theory calls Lashley an idiot. Lashley pulls Theory out of the ring and viciously attacks Theory before slamming him into the ring post twice and knocking 
and locking the hurt lock, locking in the hurt lock. He then leaves through the crowd as the referee gets back in the ring and starts counting to 10. Theory gets back in the ring. Rollins hits the stop for the win. The winner is Rollins, and this is the end of Monday Night Raw. What happened on NXT? Let's see. NXT, the results of uh, of November 8th, 2022. Joe Gacy defeated Cameron Grimes with the help of Ava Rain. Electra Lopez defeated Sol, Sol Ruka. Charlie Dempsey defeated Andre Chase. Channing Stacks Lorenzo defeated Hank Waller. Walker. JD McDonald defeated a Axiom. Damon Kemp defeated Brodus Creed by disqualification. Five minute challenge. Katana Chance and Katie Carter defeated uh, Nikita Lyons and Zoe Starks. On to AEW. Rampage results. We start off Rampage. All Atlantic Championship match. Oh, and they were coming from because they were being live from the Jim Welland Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey. We have the All Atlantic Championship title match. Freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy. Versus Katsori Shibata. Arch Cassidy was, was accompanied by best friends and Dahausen, Danhausen. Shibata grabbed a headlock on Cassidy while Cassidy had his hands in his pockets. Cassidy ducked a kick from Shibata. Cassidy took flight with a tope suicida on Shibata. Shibata whipped Orange into the steel guardrails. Shibata and Orange traded forearms outside the ring. Orange Cassidy landed a diving DDT, then running drop kick to Shibata in the corner. Shibata rallied, rallied back, rallied back, sorry, mocking Orange with Orange style kicks. Shibata blasted Orange with an open handed shot and barrage of elbows. Shibata smashed Orange with his signature drop kick in the corner. Shibata is making a hell of a statement here, guys, says Shivani. Cassidy is making a, um, Cassidy kicked Shibata, but Shibata didn't even flinch. Shibata dropped Cassidy with a big leaping forearm strike. Shibata applied the, the four flying octopus stretch to Orange, but Orange got his foot on the bottom rope. Orange retaliated with a stun, stun dog millionaire. Shibata planted Orange with a Death Valley driver. Orange fought back with a beach break. For a near fall, Orange hits Shibata with the orange punch, but Shibata didn't budge. Orange landed a second orange punch and pinned Shibata. Shibata, um, Orange picks up the win. Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, and Jamie Hayter versus Madison Raid and Sky Blue. Sky Blue hit, hits... Sky Blue hit a crossbody on Hater for a near fall. Sky landed a thrust kick on Hater, but Hater Britt tagged in 
but ate a roundhouse kick from Sky. Madison tagged in and used a nick breaker on Britt Br Baker. Madison caught Baker in a cutter. Hayden Hayden ran in and nailed Madison with a backbreaker. Baker nailed Madison with a swinging neckbreaker. Britt and Hayter hit a double thrust kicks on Madison Madison and Sky. Hayter's Hayter mauled Madison with a ripcord lariat and pinned her. We could be looking at the next AEW Women's Champion, interim Women's Champion. And for the love of God, there's been enough time that fucking this could have turned into the regular instead of the interim. Tony, you need to get rid of the interim. It's either that they they uh, relinquish it or defend it. And if they are ready to go into a match, that woman gets the title immediately. And that, that, that woman takes the title into the match with a replacement. That's how it goes. That's how it goes, okay? Jamie continued to beat up Madison and Sky after the match until AEW Interim Women's Champion Tony Storm came down and cleared the house. Storm and Hayter slugged it out until Storm put Hayter in the Texas Cloverleaf. Britt Baker clocked Tony in the head with Tony's Women's Championship belt, and that is the end of that. Absolute Ricky Starks came comes down to the ring. Starks, I hear all the people online who want to see Ricky Starks on TV. I never had to beg because you know that that I'm good. I don't have to tell you that I'm good. You like me because I. Do, because I po do pose. Well, I like you too. I have put on put in work since day one. Everyone has questioned, but I have the answer in this new tournament. Ricky Starks has the answer, and I'm entering myself in the Eliminator Tournament for the AEW World Championship. I know there's people who are prouder, proud to be part of the AEW Pillars. How can they be proud when their place is, the, the place is crumbling? I'm walking into Phil Gear as R Ricky Starks, and I'm walking out as the new number one contender for the AEW World Championship. And I'll go on to face John Moxley, or I can face MJF. I deal in definites because I am absolute Ricky Starks. Sammy Guevara challenges the American Dragon. Brian Danielson in a two out of three fall match on Dynamite this Wednesday. Main event time. War Joe, Ring of Honor World TV Champion Samoa Joe and TV Champion Warlow versus the Gates of Ad Agony, Khan and to Toa Lona. Warlow Bull, Warlow Bull rushes Khan in the corner. Warlow grounded and pounded Khan after mounting him. Samoa ta Samoa Joe tagged in, to tagged in, and then Toa tagged in. Toa backed up Joe into the corner. Joe fired in shots at L Lona. Toa battered Joe's ribs with knee strikes. Joe made the tag to Warlow, and Warlow tossed Kana Khan back in with a suplex. Tossed back with a suplex, sorry. Warlow spiked Khan, then smashed him with a lariat. Kana Prince Nana jumped on the apron, but Warlow hammered him. Kana got rocked by a headbutt by Warlow. Warlow powerbombed Khan. Warlow pinned Khan after a quarter of after a quarter of power bombs. Impressive tag team victory, said Ross. After the match, Powerhouse Hobbs comes out to the ramp and taunted Warlow, muttering that he wants the TNT championship around his waist. So we're 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 gonna have this now. I gotta take this um text. Give me one second. Dynamite. 
Dynamite was really boring. It was like, there's no urgency to build for full gear. I don't understand this. For a company that's driven into, you know, um, driven into logic and storylines, there's no fucking urgency. Absolutely. I do not understand what the hell is going on here. But, um, With the impending return of the Elite, which is now being rumored that they're going to get a Bray Wyatt treatment, okay? No, they don't need that, okay? They don't need that. They've never been fired, all right? They were doing suspension, all right? Until the fucking goddamn investigation came through and through about CM Punk. And CM Punk did uh, some, um, some MMA commentating last night. And supposedly he's suspended. So how is he able to do other projects while he's suspended? The elite wasn't allowed to do it. They were pulled. They were pulled. So I guess still the nepotism going on. But there's really no such an urgency with the um, build to, to um, go full gear. And it's just, it boggles my mind. It does. It boggles my mind. Tonight's episode of Dynamite was broadcast from the Agatis Arena in Boston, Massachusetts. And for the people thinking that Sasha Banks, Mercedes, were going to show up on Dynamite, uh, the, the, uh, I know what you guys are smoking. You've got to get away from fucking goddamn that riddle. Please, do me the favor. Thanks. We have an eight-man tag match. We have the AEW Tag Team Champions, The Acclaimed, teaming up with FTR, the AAA, the IWGP, and the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. They're going to get Swerve in Our Glory, The Guns, Austin and Colton. Billy Gunn sprinted down to the ring and tackled Swerve. Billy was then ejected to the back. Dax and Colton began their respective teams with the gun club double teaming Dax. Austin was sent hard into the turnbuckles after a catapult. Swerve tagged in and swarmed Cash in the corner with quick hands. Platinum Max tagged in as Keith Lee, as did Keith Lee. Caster escaped with a scoop slam from the, from limitless Keith Lee. The acclaim used tandem tackles to take down Keith Lee. Bowens ha hammered away on swerves. Bowens dropped a leg on Colton for a near fall. The gun double teamed Bowens with a big rig for a near fall, but Caster was there to break it up. The pin attempt. Bedlam broke out with all teams began to brawl with their opposition. Keith Lee powerbombed Bowens onto the back of Caster. Swerve wiped out everyone with a, with a tornillo to the floor. Dax suplexed, superplexed Colton onto the pile. Dax chucked Austin back into the ring. Dax locked the sharpshooter on Austin, but Colt jumped into the ring and clocked Dax in the face. Bowens planted Colton with the arrival. FTR smashed Colton with the big rig and Bowens pinned Colton. The men's world title elimination tournament quarterfinals. Mad Dog Eddie Kingston versus all ego Ethan Page. There is a big opportunity for both veterans, says Taz. Kingston grabbed Page in a side headlock Kingston chopped away at Page in the corner, but Page fired back with flying shoulder tackles. Eddie sent Ethan flying with a butterfly suplex, good for a near fall. Ethan Page whipped Eddie into the turnbuckles. Ethan followed up with a fore forearm and then a suplex on the arena floor. 
Back in the ring, both men blow for blow, throwing hands. Kingston blasted Page with an exploder suplex. Kingston locked on the stretch plum, for, but Stokely distracted the ref, buying Ethan Page time. Page cracked Kingston with a roundhouse kick. Ethan hit an avalanche ego's edge, and Eddie was and to pin Eddie to pin to to, to to Eddie and pin him. Sorry, all Egan ego Page advances in the tournament. TNT Open Challenge: Warlow versus Arya Davari took the open challenge. Warlow hit Davari with a headbutt and reared back with a big lariat. Warlow began a symphony of power bombs on Ari. Warlow hit a second power bomb and he was fired up and angry. Warlow hit a third and a fourth and then pinned Davari. After the match, Warlow called out Powerhouse Hobbs. Warlow finally was, finally, I have a suitable opponent for my title. And thanks for coming out to face me like a man. But you ain't getting this TV TNT title. It's mine, and it will always be mine. Ring of Honor ch TV champion Joe Samoa Joe ambushed Warlow from behind and choked out Warlow. Powerhouse Hobbs said he'd take out both men. Now, the reason why Joe turned on Warlow is because Warlow said that he's going to have every title in this company. It was in AEW. That, I know it makes sense. I mean, I know that Tony Khan owns at the, old, both companies, but it's, he met, I think he meant AEW, but if that's both, then whatever the case may be. Sucks to be fucking Warlow. Backstage, TBS champion Jay Cargill told Renee Paquette that she would seek out Nyla Rose on Rampage this Friday. Tony Schiavone interviewed Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, and Soraya in the ring. Soraya, I bet you really guys are wondering what happening, what's happening with me. A couple of weeks ago, I took tests, and unfortunately, for Britt, I'm 100% clear to wrestle. AEW is my house. Britt, well, is there any more, anything more fickle than an AEW fan? So you're cleared. No, we aren't cleared. Soraya, you've been coming after me since day one you've got here. Let me know if this is clear. I built AEW from the ground up until it became a fortress, until, until superstars like you wanted to move into it. And I'm damn proud of that. But that turns but that pride turns into resentment very quickly when you have the audacity to skip in here and call it your house. Um uh, miss um uh, miss I, I I'm sorry. This is this is pissing me off, okay? This pissed me off on fucking Wednesday, okay? Brit Darling, girl, baby girl, uh, sweetheart, if it wasn't for the likes of Paige and everybody that has come before you to start the revolution, to start women's wrestling, to make it a thing in this time of day, you wouldn't have a job. You would probably just be at dental school and you wouldn't be knowing Mr. Adam Cole, baby. So please. Have several seats. Go, you know what? Go to your practice. Go take some um some nitrous oxide. Have a chill pill and and let let the big girls play. Okay, let the big girls play. Cause let me tell you something, bitch. You know I I appreciate you in the ring, but I don't appreciate your fucking attitude. You're just like fucking CM Punk. You're just like fucking goddamn the Elite. You're just like everybody else in AEW. You are a self-entitled fucking bitch. And I don't give a shit you come out to me. I don't care. If this goes and somebody clips it and goes and sends it to Britt Baker, bring it, baby girl. Bring it. I have been, 
I am 40 fucking years old. I've been watching wrestling since I'm three months old. And let me ask you, when did you get involved in wrestling? Probably when I started to develop uh, feelings for the opposite sex when I was 11, 12 years old, right? Where I fucking goddamn started having ogle eyes for Shawn Michaels. So let me get this fucking abundantly clear. You would not have a position in a company that just started up three years ago, okay? Paige is more of a star than you. She has done it better than you. She fucking goddamn was wrestling inside the womb before you were even a fucking wet dream, bitch. So let's, let's, let's talk brass tacks now here, baby girl, all right? You have got to have several seats. You've got to have respect. Because these are the women that come, that that if it paved the way for you to have a job, for you to fucking fly all over the fucking world in probably Tony Khan's private jet, probably sucking his cock and fucking not saying a word to damn Adam Cole. And if he ever fucking finds out that you are cheating on him, let me girl, let me let me tell you this. I don't I don't want him. I don't want him. He's young. He's young, all right? He's young. He's a good-looking man. He can do much better than you. In fact, hmm, let me think here. I think he would be best off on with somebody from WWE. I think he would be better off with maybe, oh, like maybe uh, somebody like a Lynn Morgan or somebody like that that actually will take good care of him. Because let me tell you something. If he's playing video games the amount of time that He's playing video games. You're certainly not doing your job, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. What? You can't fucking goddamn satisfy your own man? Because let me tell you something. I know you're not satisfying him. And I could probably name a bazillion other people that could fucking satisfy him. And let me tell you something. I'd be the last one on the list because I don't need to do that. Because if I did that, he would forget about you. He would forget about you. So let's move on because you are a self-entitled bitch. And I'm glad, I'm glad if I'm hoping that fucking Tony gave you the right, right act when you were showed up on WWE television. Not what you have to always sit at camera view, right? Because you're a fucking goddamn camera hog. So she keeps saying, she keeps putting shit in her mouth. I think she's going to need her own fucking tools to get her mouth cleaned. So I don't recall you laying a single brick. I get that. I know you're cleared with me. It's because I'm everything you wish you could have been. Um, Hey, uh, Britt, you want to keep fucking putting the shit in your mouth? I gladly fucking goddamn stuffing it in like a Sunday fucking turkey on, uh, on Christmas morning, all right? Let me remind you that you left your house and walked into mine. And Soraya, I regret to inform you that we don't take walk-ins, so make so make an appointment. Um, you don't take walk-ins. I thought this was a house and not a office. I don't understand the correlation. I mean, come on, be a little bit more clear. Soraya, I think you're cute. You put yourself on a pedestal considering you were handpicked by Tony Khan. You don't know what it takes to be a superstar. You have no idea what it takes to make it. I started Revolution before wrestling was in even a twinkle in your eye. You don't know what it is takes, Britt. You don't have a clue what it takes to make it. But here's another opportunity handed to you on a silver platter. It is going to be you against me at full gear. Britt tried to take a cheap shot. Soraya counted with a D, D, D. Rampage. What she did was rampage. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm just thinking... I, did I just say that? I didn't even have to read my fucking notes. Britt, 
when you get off Cod's cock, all right, and you come up for air and you you clear your cobwebs or or you're sucking that nitrous oxide to the point that your brain dead and those blonde highlights are fucking with your brain, or or that um you're not getting the attention at home where you you know Adam has to go play video games. I mean, I really feel bad for him. You know, I really really feel bad for him. He he deserves a woman that will honor and obey him. Yes, I'm not a feminist. So, yeah, um, he needs somebody that's going to be by his side. He's still injured. You're still wrestling. And let me tell you something. When, uh, when he was in WWE, you were fucking clamoring to be in that audience. Every time Adam had a match, you were clamoring to be in that audience. So, so... Because he's injured, you don't want nothing to do with him now. You selfishly took this man out of WWE. Yes, you did. You selfishly, because you fucking goddamn guilted him. Oh, I'm here. Shouldn't you be here? We can be a couple, blah, blah, blah. He wouldn't have gotten hurt. Because WWE is a very safe place to work. He has never been hurt in WWE. Real, real, a real um injury. Goes over to AEW less than three to six months. He's in the fucking company. He's out on he's out out on the DL list. Do you know he really deep down? I can guarantee you. I can guarantee you all the fucking money in the world. I can guarantee you, Miss Baker, um, that he would like to be back in WWE. He would like to be with his dad, his his wrestling dad, which is Shawn Michaels. And he would like to be with his wrestling uncle, his uh, wrestling uncle, which is Pop H, okay? So he would be, what would he be doing right now? Let me think. He would have probably been at WrestleMania. He would have probably been at uh, Crown Jewel. He would have probably been at SummerSlam. And he probably would be getting ready to possibly win the Royal Rumble. One year. He would have been doing all this stuff. Maybe he would have been Mr. Money in the Bank. He could have fucking taken the title off of Roman Reigns. But no. He had a fucking comment to your to AEW. So he could be your little lapdog. Because you consider yourself the star. And you consider yourself bigger than Adam Cole. Which is bullshit. Alright? We didn't know of you if it wasn't for him. You better be glad that you slept with the right guy and you better be glad that you fucking went out with the right guy. Just, you know what? You're just like fucking Nick, Nikki Bella. You're just like Nikki Bella and uh, Brie Bella. All of you are three bitches. At least I could say that you're a better wrestler than the two of them put together. Moving on. Hold on. We have Trent Beretta versus Jay Lethal for the, yeah, just, it's, I thought this was an eliminator thing. Jay Lethal attacked Trent from behind as Trent was making his entrance. Lethal went after Trent's knee. Lethal whipped Trent into the steel ring steps. Ring, back in the ring, Trent rallied back with a suplex to Jay. Chuck Taylor and Dan Housen walked down to the ring to check on Trent Beretta. Trent nailed Letha with a swinging DDT off the turnbuckles. Trent hit an avalanche half and half on Letha. Sanjay Dutt jumped on the apron, but so did Dan Housen. Sadamon Singh blasted Dan Housen with a headbutt. Letha rocked Trent with a lethal injection and pinned him. After the match, Tony Schiavone inter tried to interview Sanjay Dutt. Dutt, I promised a huge surprise last week, and we delivered with the legendary Jeff Jarrett. He came out to the ramp, and Jarrett said that Sunday Dutt, over a million views of the debut of last week of the last outlaw. It's very apparent. The question is, why is the last outlaw in AEW? Because he has friend. When a friend calls, a friend shows up. 
I showed up to put a plan together and we started last week. Sting, Darby Allen, we are calling you out. I am putting a challenge you out to you right now. So let me get this straight. He gets to be on the fucking pay-per-view, but likes of Ricky Starks doesn't. Or, um, oh, I don't know, Sammy Guevara. Or stuff like other people. Boy, is this fucking place is turning into WCW more and more each day. And fucking people want him, want Tony Khan to hire Hulk Hogan. That would be company suicide. Renee Paquette was backstage with Jack Jungle Boy Perry. Jungle Boy said that Christian Cage doesn't get to decide when it's over. Jungle Boy said that he, could, he couldn't wait for full gear. He wanted to tell Cage and Luchasaurus about his challenge face-to-face -face this Friday on Rampage. AEW World Champion John Moxley came to the ring with William Regal. Moxley, Sir William Regal, how old was I when we first met? 25, 26? I was full of piss and vinegar back then, and I thought I knew it all. I knew it all. I wanted to be just like you, feared and respected. So prove, so to prove it to myself, to you, I tried to go pick a fight with you. And that didn't go far and go well at all. You tortured me and brutalized me. You forced me to evolve. You told me as you, you finally took me under your wing. And now the real work begins. Now who does that young kid remind you of? Regal says MJF. Moxley. And he will face MJF at full gear for the AEW World Championship. The question is, is that, is what is it going to be different this time for MJF? Who is MJF? He seems to be having some type of accidental, accidental crisis now. He calls himself a pillar through, though he has no idea what that is. Or to have, or no idea what it, wait a second. He has no idea what it is like to have any weight on his back. Even more amusing, he calls himself the devil. Dude, I've seen the devil. I've met the devil. I've looked eyes in his, I've looked in his eyes. Dude, you're not that. You're not that at all. Now I want you, as William Regal wants you, to fulfill your potential one day. When you step in the ring in your t hometown, which New Jersey is not MJF's hometown. Sweetie, Boxley, Bubby, come here. I need to live, have a little, little tete -tete, a little, little um, powwow here with you. New Jersey is not Long Island. Please refrain from that. I am I am not proud to be a New Yorker. I am not. I am not proud. And I'm certainly not proud to be associated with the fucking armpit of the United States. So, please, please, Moxley, Bubby, we're, that's not MJF's hometown. Okay? Thank you. He's, he's in the tri-state area. Yes, he's in his home. His, his, the tri-state area is his home field advantage, but that's not his hometown, Jersey. Sorry. Sorry, Bubby. Let's move on, okay? Just remember one thing. Everything you've dr drone done up to this point has been easy. Jamie Hayter with Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, and Rebel versus Sky Blue with the AEW Women's Champion, Tony Storm. Hater blasted Blue with an elbow strike. Blue shoved Hater headfirst into the ring post. Sky Blue rocked Hater with a rising knee strike. Baker grabbed Blue ankle, Blue's ankle, and then Jamie Hater see, seized the opportunity to suplex Scott. Sky Blue is, hits a diving crossbody press on Hater for a near fall. Sky smashed Hater with the code red for a two count. Hater crocked, cracked Sky with a forearm to the jaw. Hater landed a high boot to Blue. Hater pinned Blue after a ripcord lariat. So we backstage 
we have Alex Marvez trying to interview absolute Ricky Starks. The murder hark monster Lance Archer attacked Starks and rammed him into the steel overhead garage door. Two out of three falls match. The American Dragon, Brian Danielson versus the Spanish God, Sammy Guevara with Tay Mello. Danielson walloped Guevara with a barrage of kicks and chops. Sammy defended with a corkscrew drop kick. Brian fired back with a shotgun drop kick off the top rope. Danielson was looking for a tope suicida, but Tay Mello jumped in the way, buying Sammy time. Sammy threw a steel chair at Brian, which cost Sammy his first fall as the ref disqualified Sammy. Sammy grabbed a microphone from the timekeeper's table and bludgeoned Danielson with it. Danielson was busted wide open. More blood. Can we go through a dynamite without blood, please? That would be great. Sammy cl clocked Danielson with a GTH and pinned Danielson, winning the second fall. The match was even at one fall each, said Excalibur. Danielson attempted a diving headbutt, but Sammy dodged it. Sammy locked in a cross face. Sammy cranked back with a grip, but Danielson was able to reach the ropes, forcing the ref to break the hold. Sammy jumped off the turnbuckles, but Sam Danielson countered it with double knees. Tamello ejected from ringside after putting her hands on the ref. Danielson kicked Sammy while Sammy was tied up in the tree of woe. Guevara rocked Danielson with a leaping knee. Sammy dropped down on Danielson with a shooting star press on the arena floor. Sammy attempted the springboard cutter, but Danielson countered with a bell lock. Sammy made it to the ropes, forcing the ref to break the hold. Danielson pun uh, punished Sammy with a roundhouse kicks. Sammy caught Danielson with a knee strike, but Danielson fired back with a knee of strike of his own. Sammy applied the lion tamer. Danielson made the crawl to the ropes and forced and forced the break. Dragon dropped Sammy with a with the running knee. Sammy landed a backflip DDT. Danielson transitioned into the bell lock. And Sammy made the vertical submission. The ref stopped the match as Sammy was submitted. So um that is that. That is that. That is the end of the week. Um, I'm hoping everybody was is clear about the whole situation. Um, I think we have a little bit of breaking news. Give me one second while I go check the... Okay. No, just a little bit of a um, reminder, but... Um, Dynamite is not being urgent to full gear. Full gear is just going to be thrown together. And that's what WWE would do, would have done. We are now on the road to war games now. All right. We are on to war games. Let's see how good Triple H builds this. It also didn't help that they have fucking Crown Jewel that was like kind of their roadblock at that point. But um, yeah, uh, I, I'm hoping that. War Games is going to be well. Um, I'm hoping that Charlotte doesn't come back at all. And we can then enjoy a Charlotte free fucking hopefully the rest of the year until fucking WrestleMania where we know that she's going to come back and she's going to demand a fucking title shot because she's Charlotte Flair. Well, fuck her and fuck her entire last name because let me guess, let me tell you, your husband's a lot better in the ring than you are. Okay, let's move on. Um, we're going to see the, um, the brackets of the World Cup tonight, I believe. Um, we are going to be start setting up more for war games. Uh, Rampage is on tonight. Um, it's looking out to be a good couple weeks. Hopefully that Dynamite gets a little bit better. Monday Night Raw, um... The only thing that I'm pretty that I'm excited about is the thing with Judgment Day. That's it. There's nothing on there to get me excited. There's nothing. I would uh, when it gets more exciting when Rhea Ripley finally is 
is blessed with that WWE World Women's Championship. I'll get more into that. But um, this is going to be an interesting uh, couple weeks. Um, as we get closer to full gear, and that's on a Saturday, um, obviously I'm going to be uploading the preview and predictions, and then when, I, when that goes off, I'm going to um, record my review right afterwards. And then after that, we're going to be the the uh, war games, which I'll be doing the exact same thing. It's just going to be a little more trickier because my son's going to be home from school and I'm going to need to be on there. So probably I'll record everything and then be it uploaded legitimately right after the upload is complete. And we're off to the races. But um, I want everybody to have a great Friday, you know, a great Friday. It's crappy here in the Northeast. We're dealing with the remnants of Nicole. And we are just basically in the house for the rest of the day. But you know what you could do? You could go check out all my rest of my content on my YouTube page. Please like, share, and please hit the subscribe button and turn on my notifications so when I post stuff, you'll know about it. Also, please go check out me on Instagram, tw uh, Twitter, and TikTok, Mel's Match at you can also find me on Snapchat and Facebook. Also, please go check out Harry's at harrys.com and get all your toiletry and shaving essentials there. Please go check out Maestro Classics at maestroclassics.com and get all your beard essentials. Please go check out Liquid Death at liquiddeath.com and try their lime, mixed berry, and mango orange. Also, go check out uh, Death Wish Coffee at deathwishcoffee.com and get all your coffee essentials there, including the seasonal flavor of gingerbread. They have just, they have finished up the K-Cups for the uh, pumpkin chai, which makes me very sad. Um, but you could also try the, I, I don't know if uh, Blueberry Vanilla is back on the scene, but you could go check that out at the website. And you could go get their regular um, everyday flavors, which are the medium roast, the dark roast, and the Valhalla. And they also have an espresso. So go check them out at uh, deathwishcoffee.com. Please go check out HOG Wrestling at hogwrestling.net and go check out all their past pay-per-views, which are on Fight TV. If you want to get them legitimately comp uh, um, complimentary when you pay the $4.99 a month, you could go and get Fight Plus, excellent uh, matches on there, and your some of your favorites that are from AEW and former WWE um, employees. It's also, they're going to be back at it in December, and they're going to be having the services of Bullet Club member Kenta, also known as Hideo Itami from NXT. Please go check that all out on Fight TV, and if you need any links, go to their website at hogwrestling.net. Also, please go check out, in, if you're in the greater Pennsylvania area, please go check out Sanctuary and Outbreak Wrestling and check them out on their major uh, social media accounts. Um, I will be back here next week for 265 um, and getting everything ready for full gear and whatnot. Um, please, please, if you're going to go out, take your time so you don't go hydroplaning and, and have a great day and stay safe and stay dry. I love you all. See you next week. Bye-bye.